The current food system generates a huge range of interconnected problems. Um, one of the most important is uh, the health impacts that result from poor dietary patterns. On the one hand, we have about 800 billion people worldwide whose diets lack sufficient calories and micronutrients to enable them to live a, a healthy life. Um, and on the other hand, we have a global growth in problems of obesity and associated non-communicable diseases. So about 2 billion people worldwide um, consume foods uh, that are causing them long-term health damage. And so at the same time, uh, increasingly our demand for resource intensive foods, particularly meat and dairy products, is um, damaging the environment upon which future food production depends. The report tried to do several things. First, it took a look at which countries worldwide are actually uh, publishing dietary guidelines and it found that there were some 80-85 countries that were doing this um, most of them were clustered in high-income developed countries. There was a growth in uh, the publication of dietary guidelines in the rapidly growing emerging economies, which is good, uh, but in some of the poorest countries of the world, um, there's still a real dearth of guidelines out there, and that needs to change, and it is slowly, slowly changing. So the first thing we tried to do was look at what was going on out there. The second thing we tried to do was look at which countries were starting to incorporate environmental considerations into their dietary guidelines. And, and it found a far, far smaller number of uh, countries that were doing this. And it also analysed what it was that those um, countries were saying. Um, and then finally, um, it looked at the extent to which uh, dietary guidelines actually were backed up by supportive policies and what it found was uh, that there's very little obvious link between the dietary guidelines on the one hand and the policy action on the other. What the report also did was try to uh, set out a set of uh, principles for what uh, low environmental impact uh, healthier diets look like and how far those governments that were issuing advice on sustainability, um, what they actually said. So we set out some general principles based on a growing body of very, very robust research. And the general messages are things like, don't eat more than you need, base your diets around plants, whole grains, legumes, fruits and vegetables, moderate your consumption of animal products, don't waste food, because wasted food is a waste of all the environmental impacts associated with producing, distributing and consuming it. Um, Minimise your consumption of high fat, high sugar foods and drink tap water as opposed to bottled water or other, other beverages. So those were the general principles and they align very well with health, um, but the emphasis on moderation of animal products is also very important from an environmental perspective. Dietary guidelines are really important um, and governments that haven't published any so far should, should do so. But they're important not just because they set out the intended direction of travel, they need also to be backed up by policies that help uh, citizens move in that direction. Um, and so governments have a responsibility to link them to public procurement policies, advertising regulations, um, any uh, guidance or regulations that they put in place around uh, food industry activity and so forth. So, and in the development of those guidelines, we also emphasise the need for um, various government departments to be involved in their development and in owning the guidelines so that, it's an, that they are the outcome of an integrated uh, approach to policy making. So in particular, health ministries and environmental ministries need to work together, but there also needs to be an interaction and consultation with um, academics so that those guidelines are uh, robust and with civil society and other stakeholders 
in the food system who shouldn't dictate what those uh, guidelines say, but should be evolved in that evolution so that they're um, so that when they do come out, they are more uh, collectively owned.